Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the launch of the Electoral Contractor Safety Program Guide. Uh, that's a real mouthful, so we actually just refer to it as the guide, and I'll refer to it today as uh, the guide. Um, I'm pleased to see a variety of people that have turned up today, some from the uh, safety regulators, electrical regulators, um, government and uh, private businesses. <coughs> so thank you all for attending. Um, this guide has been part of um, Austrade's safety journey now over a number of years. And whilst we uh, have been focused on um, developing a work health safety management system in accordance with the new legislation, we've also been focused on this body of work in producing the guide. Um, Austrade, as it always has done, is believed in sharing um, the safety information that it's produced and uh, this guide makes uh, no exception to that. Uh, the guide is aimed primarily at assisting government, business and the electrical industry with a consistent approach um, to the procurement and provision of safe electrical services. Um, and the themes through the guide are about consistency and um, responsibility. Uh, in particular, the guide references two um, resource um, materials. One is the guidance on occupational health and safety in government <coughs> procurement. This is um, a dated document um, back to 2006. Um, the legislation has since changed in relation to work health and safety. However, the basis of how it um, works its way through a government procurement is um, particularly well written and therefore it's been used as a resource as part of this guide. Um, the guide also uses as a resource the Red Book, which many of you may have grabbed a copy of this morning. Um, that's a guidebook that's been produced by the National Electrical and Communications Association to assist people within their industries for the provision of safe electrical services. Uh, the number one focus for this guide um, is the health and safety of all workers. So in particular that's workers within the electrical industry, the electrical contractors, but also for the workers um, at the places in which they're conducting their contracted work. Uh, the guide actually speaks a little bit about apprentices and new workers, which as we know in all industries are identified as a high risk group as they learn new skills. There are three core principles of the guide. Uh, the first one is meeting the legislative requirements. Um, this was a, an interesting part of the journey for me. Obviously uh, we're referring to um, electrical standards. The guidebook itself tries to refer to best practice. So in some states and jurisdictions, there are differing um, work health safety legislation and other electrical um, standards. The whole point of this guidebook hasn't been to try and make sure that it includes every single area and every single jurisdiction. The point of this guidebook is to try and go for a best practice approach. So sometimes within this guidebook, the standards will be higher than those that are required within a certain jurisdiction. Um, the second part of the guide um, principles is using a risk management approach. So for each exercise of the electrical contracting is to have an approach based on risk. And the third part of, um, principle of the guide is in implementing safe systems of work. In doing that, this guide has a number of appendices at the rear of it to assist people with trying to implement safe systems of work and also in trying to comply with their legislative responsibilities. Um, the guide follows the procurement of electrical services from start until finish. Um, it's been difficult to write a guide to try and cover everything, but we've tried to cover from the smallest type of service work and contract work to some of the um, more larger, more complex electrical projects. Um, as a result, through the guide, you'll see um, checklists where it may be appropriate to do a smaller number of things for smaller service work. Um, and um, put in place some larger structures for more larger construction projects. Um, the purpose of the guide, we're really hoping that the guide, um, for those that aren't familiar with electrical procurement, demystifies um, electrical procurement and the procurement process by trying to hold your hand a little bit and to step you through the processes. It's, it doesn't cover absolutely everything, I need to stress that, but um, it's certainly the basis for a, a procurement process. Um, 
the guide has an emphasis on very little written material at the front. Uh, the focus is on the resource material to educate people about um, the electoral industry, electoral contractors and their responsibilities. And on the other hand, to also educate electoral contractors about the requirements of business and government in conducting a procurement process. Uh, that is one of the major focuses. Um, as I've said, it's been developed with a best practice approach and um, we've attempted to comply with as much legislation within this document as we can. Um, following this official part of the launch, I invite you to stay, um, have a drink, have some coffee, have some cake, and um, if you've got questions about the guide, the use of the guide, or how you may use it within your agency or organisation, I'm happy to answer questions. There's certainly people from certain regulators here, whether it be electoral or safety, they're also probably free to answer your question. Um, I would like to thank uh, Mr David Bowen, who's here from NECA, uh, on behalf of NECA, and uh, he was a great assistance in um, composing the guide. Um, in the interests of safety, there is no copyright attached to this guide. So this guide, you're able to download, display, print, and produce the guide as you require it, and the guide will be available on the Austrade um, internet as well. Um, I have my business cards out the front of the room here. Um, if you would like an electronic copy of the guide and don't have one yet, um, please send me an email and I can provide you with one. Um, that concludes the formal part of the presentation of the guide. Um, I would now what I would like to do is um, have a short break and then answer any questions that you may have in relation to the guide. Um, I just want to take this opportunity too to thank a few of the people in the room that provided some feedback through the um, public consultation phase, um, which um, went for a period of time. And there was a lot of good information received um, from people to make this guide the document that it is today. So I thank everyone for their input. Any questions? <coughs> 